Flight simulators are great for practicing and demonstrating procedures like a missed approach, but they aren't always able to replicate complicated avionics like the GPS with perfect faithfulness. We'll have a look at an example of that breakdown, not to highlight that shortcoming, but to show you how to handle the inevitable scenario where you're caught in a situation where what you want and what the GPS wants are in conflict. We're on an ILS approach into Provo, Utah. The missed approach procedure has several steps to it. First, we make a straight out climb to 6,200 feet. Then we make a right turn to 301 degrees, staying in the climb to 9,000. From the 301 heading, we're gonna intercept the 230 radial off the Provo VOR and fly that to the Caleb intersection, which is on the 160 radial from the Fairfield VOR, which we'll then fly inbound to and hold over. So there's a number of steps to this missed approach. Shooting an ILS like this, we're not using the GPS as our primary means of guidance. We have the Provo VOR tuned to Nav 2 with the OBS on that dial set to the 230 radial we're meant to intercept. When we arrive at the decision altitude, 4756, we initiate the missed procedure and make a straight ahead climb. When we cross the runway threshold, the GPS goes into suspend mode. We can unsuspend it to sequence to the missed approach and press the CDI button to switch to the GPS guidance. As we brief, the first segment of the mist is to go up from the missed approach point to 6,200 feet. The GPS shows the leg like this. GPS units have a number of what are called leg types, ways to get from one part of a procedure to another. This leg type is what's known as a heading to an altitude. Interestingly, there's no definitive point on the ground where this leg terminates at. Some aircraft climb quickly to 6200, others more slowly. You could see this demonstrated if we fly the missed approach in a G1000 equipped aircraft. As our climb rate goes up and down, that waypoint moves out and back. This is what's known as a floating fix. On the G1000, the database works with the floating fix to compute the next sequence, which is a leg type called heading to a radial termination. You don't need to know the names of these leg types, but if you have a look at the sequence back on the Garmin 43530, it goes straight from the 6200 waypoint to the Caleb intersection. There's no 301 heading to intercept the proper radial. The GPS is giving us a track to fix leg type, which is close, but not the same as flying 301 to intercept the radial and then flying that out. Now, this is a limitation of the GPS in the simulator. A GPS that can compute floating fixes like a WAS enabled 430 should be okay. But now we're in a situation where what we want to do and what the GPS is telling us to do are in conflict. We're responsible for flying the procedure correctly. That's why we have the VOR on backup. We immediately recognize the mistake and fly the proper 301 heading, waiting for the 230 radial on nav 2 that we programmed in to come to center. From there, we'll fly it outbound. Now we can go direct to Caleb and the GPS will take us along the proper route. Sooner or later, you will find yourself in a situation where the GPS or maybe the autopilot aren't doing what you expected them to do and you can never take yourself out of the equation. Now here, we sort of engineered this problem using a known limitation of the simulator, but these, oh, huh, that's not quite what I expected moments, happen in IFR flying. And it's important to keep backups like the VOR or a moving map handy to stay out of trouble. For more IFR insights and training, head on over to our website linked here and in the description.